Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of DGS2, case, uh, case, case 1. So, we are asking if we have a means to prove who the photographer of that one evidence, that one photo that the prosecution has presented. And there is a way to prove it. So we're going to answer that with a yes, we can prove it. I moved this over so I can see it better. It's not a matter of whether I can or can't. I just have to do it. The defense can clearly prove the identity of the person who took this photo. But, but that's ridiculous. There's no way. All right, then go ahead. Tell us that person's name. Unfortunately, I don't know their name. There, you see? You couldn't even finish your bluff before. However, I could still prove it. I have evidence that shows who took the photo. What? In that case, the defense will present this evidence. What evidence shows who took the photo? Uh, alright, well, let's first... So, you notice that this picture has a crack on it? Um, there was another picture that we did receive that also had a crack on it. It'll let me... We have to examine this first. If you look very closely in that picture, there's also a crack in the same spot. So this is the conversation between you and Soseki-sama? See, there it is. The same crack. It seems to have been quite lively. Mr. Soseki got a little overexcited about our discussion about England and accidentally gave me an impression, an impressive karate chop to the throat. Jesus! That must have hurt. <laughs> anyway, let us present this newspaper. Can I? This is the newspaper from before. Two merry men tell all after returning from England. What's important is not the article, but the photo. Look closely. You can see a whitish line in the picture. Qu quite right. I had sort of wondered about that. Ha! It must be a shadow or something. Perhaps of a tree branch? Inside a building? I can't imagine that the tree would have been growing in the research lab of Yume Imperial University. Maybe potted plants, but not a tree. Now then, please direct your attention toward this photo next. Ah. Here we can see the exact same whitish line. No bearing on this case! It uh, must be a shadow or something! Perhaps of a tree branch! He really loves this tree branch. There are no trees growing inside the shack. <coughs> and it's exactly the same shape in both photos. What on earth could such a mysterious thing mean? There's a crack on the lens, damn it! The significance between the same mark being on both photos is it's the photographer's signature mark. The camera is damaged. <laughs> there was a tree! Aww, Hikari, I kind of wish you gave me that one. Maybe I should have said you should give me that wrong answer because I'm kind of curious. Uh, the camera is damaged. It's, of course, a flaw with the camera. What? what? The camera? It appears that there's a crack in the camera's lens. And we can conclude that that crack showed up in the photos. In other words, these two photos were taken with the same camera. But... Hundreds of cameras are dropped in our empire every day! There's still no way for us to know who owns this camera! Have you forgotten, Prosecutor Auchi? This is a newspaper article. N newspaper? Oh! That's right. The person who wrote this article is the one we're looking for. D 
damn it! Mama Mommy! <laughs> so, Seki? It's one of the merry men who returned from England. Your testimony is over! Who said you could get on the stand? Like I said, it's Mama Mommy! Mama Mommy! Ma, me, mo, me. What? Uh, so Seki sama? Just what is this mommy momi you speak of? After I returned to Japan from England, one of the reporters from this paper, from the Daily Daikoku, has been covering everything I do. His name is Mama Mumi Hita, and he covers all my activities from morning till night. Uh, come to think of it earlier. My every move is laid bare, just like this. Who would have who totally wouldn't I did not figure it out that this guy would actually end up being on the witness stand? Like, come on. There was a reporter with him. With his right hand, he scribbled down articles. With his left hand, he brandished his camera. And that reporter's name is Mama Mummy Hita! So that the person who took this photo was. It was Mama Mummy, Mr. Your Honor, Sir! Bailiff, summon this newspaper reporter to the Supreme Court at once. The court will now take a brief recess. Uh, yes, Your Honor. As you wish. Yeah, you better be sweating, boy. Old man, excuse me, you're not a boy no more. And one more thing. The court would like the blade of this knife to be tested for poison. We request the cooperation of Yume Imperial University's medical research lab. Understood? Ma- Mommy, mommy! <laughs> I'm gonna get really tired of saying this name. Uh, we're gonna need to continue, and we're gonna continue, obviously, because, like, that's not even ten minutes of recording there. Oh, halfway point. Still not surprisingly as long as the other ones, like. Whew, excuse me. It's the same day, 10.41 a.m., the Supreme Court, defendant lobby number three. I'm sorry, Susaru-chan. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about the medicine. Sorry, Sama. I know it was your strong sense of responsibility that led you to shoulder this burden alone. Actually, it wasn't. I was just afraid of what would happen if you found out. Um, I'm pretty sure you would have gotten a much lighter sentence if you at least, you know, said something because now we're stuck in this predicament. So, I tried to get it back from that Englishwoman before anyone noticed. Susaru-chan, you told me before the trial began... ...that you believed in me, from the bottom of your heart. Yes. And yet... I was the one who couldn't be fully trusting. I hid important information and betrayed your trust. Give me a good thwack! No! A good hard toss! Or maybe the criminal parading punishment would be more... Howry? I deserve the same thing. 
What? When I found out that you'd pull the weapon from the body, just for a moment, I doubted you. Susato-chan. Even though I swore that I'd be your ally and fight for you until the bitter end, I'm the one who betrayed you. I failed as a defense attorney. N no you... It looks like you two understand now. How difficult it is to trust someone to the very end. Yes, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. So, I'm not going to waver ever again, Haori-sama. Oh, okay. Please, can you forgive me? <sighs> I knew it, Susato-chan. You really are my handsome defense attorney in shining armor. <laughs> That's cute! <laughs> Haori-sama. I was scared when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The English woman was sitting at the back of the shack, listening as I confronted her. I know you stole it! Give it back already! Hmm, I haven't the faintest idea what you're referring to. And then, the next thing I knew... That woman got unsteadily to her feet. She collapsed before my very eyes. That knife was sticking out of her back. And that's everything that I saw. And there was no one else in the shack at the time, correct? Yes. It was just me and the Englishwoman. There shouldn't have been anyone around to stab her. This certainly was an odd turn of events. I couldn't believe it either. That's why I couldn't bring myself to talk about it. That's alright. No matter what, I'll use what you saw to prove what really happened. That's my girl. Now then, we ought to discuss where the trial will go from here. We're out of time. Let's organize our information. Right. I think the poison is going to be a problem. The police should be running tests for it right now. But it's a new type of synthetically created alkaloid, so... I doubt the police even have a way to check for it. Really? Yes, it's impossible to test for without this Regent. Uh, maybe you should give it to the cops. Uh, Regent? I sent a messenger earlier with the instructions to rush them to the police. Okay, he planned ahead. Perhaps I should give you some as well, just to be safe. A re uh, Regent. A Regent being developed in Father's lab that reacts to poison. It's considered top secret, so only use... Only those affiliated with the lab know about it. What is it, Susato? You're awfully quiet. About this newspaper article. Powerful drugs stolen from Yume Imperial University Medical Research Lab. How did this information, which was supposed to be secret, get leaked? That's because it was that Englishwoman's doing, too. That day, while the professor and Natsume Soseki-sama were having their conversation in the lab, that Englishwoman casually appeared and said this to the professor. Do 
Shall we introduce that medicine to this gentleman, doctor? Oh, that sneaky little bitch. To be honest, I was rather alarmed. Mr. Soseki expressed interest, so I showed it to him briefly. So then, Soseki-sama knew about the poison? And then, it's possible that the reporter who was covering Mr. Natsumi Soseki also saw it at that time. Reporter Mami Momi. So then, did that reporter accompany all of you swimming? Hmm? No, I don't think there was any reporter with us. That's right. He wasn't supposed to have been with them on the swimming excursion. Oh, really? A reporter accompanying a murder on a swimming trip just wouldn't be right. That's what Mr. Natsumi Soseki said to him before sending him back to his newspaper office. And yet, he snuck around taking pictures and concealed his name when he sent those pictures to the Imperial Police. <gasps> That's what it would mean. <sighs> Defense! I've just received word that we've, they've finished preparing the new witness. The trial will reconvene soon. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. Now then, let us brace ourselves. Attorney Naruhodo Ryotaro-kun. Yes, sir. He believes her so much, it's cute. Harisama put her faith in me and told me her side of the story. I will I'll repay her faith by proving what happened at the scene of the crime that day. The same day, 11.30 a.m., the Supreme Court, courtroom number one. We shall now reconvene the trial of Murasame Haori. Prosecutor Auchi, has the new witness been summoned? Before that, I have something to report. He seems a little too excited about this. Oh? Report? That prosecutor's demeanor seems awfully slick all of a sudden. During the recess, the Imperial Police were able to gain the cooperation of Professor Mikatoba's research lab and investigated the blade of this weapon once more. Let me guess, there's no poison on it. Mm, a quick response, as, respect, as expected. Oh no, it was all thanks to your honor's precise instruction. Mm, yes. I believe I was the one who sent the region to the Imperial Police via rickshaw. Look at the way he's wiggling. Apparently, we do well to prepare ourselves. So then, what was the result of the investigation? The knife that so brutally slew the victim did not contain even the faintest trace of poison! Of course. But are they certain? I swear it on the name of the Imperial Police! As long as one has the regent, testing for the poison is so simple even a baby could do it. It's unlikely that they made a mistake. Murder weapon. Knife found at the crime scene. Used to murder the victim. No poison was found on the blade. Well, shit. In other words, the embarrassing excuses the defendant was making earlier... ...have now been completely crushed! No! would now like to summon a new witness. You must be referring to the newspaper reporter responsible for the photo of the moment of the crime. Very well, Bailiff. Escort the witness to the stand. There were no traces of poison on the knife. So then, how on earth did the poison enter the victim's body? Oh boy, this guy's gonna be fun. I mean, considering how animated he was when we initially saw him, he's gonna probably be a fun witness to mess with. Now then, 
Witness, please state your name and occupation. Mamma Mamma Hita! I'm a well known journalist at the Daily Daikoku. Um, Father, what's a journalist? It's basically a reporter that specifically writes for newspapers. The blue wink gushing from my furiously scribbling pen reveals new facts every morning during breakfast tea. Yeah, but there's also blue ink on your hand on the other side. I'm not sure it's gonna be anything later, but you had a smudge there. Sell your fortune in the newspaper world and all around great guy. That's me, Mummy Mummy. This theme is fantastic, by the way. I love it. So then, were you the one who took this photograph? Ho oh, ho, what have we here? Also, something else I noticed. Did you see the, uh, the insignia on his arm, man? Where have we seen that one before? What do you mean? Oh! I'm catching the scent of an incredible scoop! Headline! Suspicious pretty boy attorney stands in court insists on unscrupulous schoolgirl's innocence! Ah, oh, readers love this! I'll make it a 72.5 paragraph uninterrupted article in tomorrow morning's paper! This guy's actions are beautiful! What? So first I will need your name! Uh, um, it's not Hodoriyo Taru, but... Okay, next! What made you decide to become a defense attorney? Um, to change Japan's legal system, but... That's quite the ambition. I simply borrowed Kazuma-sama's dream. <laughs> Way. My name is Aochi Takasuchi. I'm a beast of a prosecutor who's famous for his courtroom shaking objection. Ah, readers wouldn't be interested in that sort of thing. Ow! What? <laughs> Witness. Yes, Your Honor. The court would like you to begin by asking you. Did you take this photo? Apparently, it was sent anonymously to the Imperial Police yesterday. Yes. The fact I couldn't rang in my shutter before getting the scoop was an embarrassment to my masculinity. Is it the incidents that summoned Mommy Mommy, or is it Mommy Mommy who attracts the incidents? A journalist's strongest weapon is his legs. They allow him to race off anywhere and dig up material. That's my mummy philosophy. Your mummy mummy philosophy? Ah, uh, yes. I remember your face well now. I met you as well on the day of my, of my conversation with Mr. Natsume Soseki. Yes, precisely. The reporter you met was indeed a mommy mommy. But as I recall, you were meant to have returned to the Daily Daikoku headquarters after that conversation. However, I did not return to headquarters. The English lady said something that caught my ear. Why is he dipping his pencil to his tongue? Like, I understand pens, but that's a pencil, right? You mean... Giselle Brett. Allowing a terrible criminal to take care of herself simply because she's English. Is truly outrageous! Our country's legal system is rotten to the core! Are the verdicts hand down by our Supreme Court mere trifles? Are the Imperial Police Great Britain's lapdogs? Sh shut your mouth! This is a huge political problem for us! In any case, I adhered to my mommy mommy philosophy and wrote down what she said to me. Are you ready? I'm going to read it. You're ready, right? Here it goes. I'd like to go see the Japanese sea with all of you. 
Ah, vicious criminal going on a peaceful pleasure jaunt. There's no way I can pass this up. That's why I decided to secretly follow you all. I figured I'd bring an interview out to the English woman and hammer it out into an article. So then, you must have witnessed it. The scene in this photo with your own two eyes. Yes, I sure did, with my own two eyes. I saw the whole incident from start to finish, through my camera's viewfinder. Very well, the court requests your testimony about what you witnessed at the murder as the murder occurred. Uh, I don't think I have time to press, but we can actually hear his testimony, I believe. Let's try this. The truth I saw through my camera. The shack was surrounded on four sides by reed screens, and I was able to see inside the gap between them. The schoolgirl came in and began to argue with the seated Englishwoman. The next thing I knew, the schoolgirl pulled out a knife, dragged the Englishwoman to the ground, and plunged it into her back! My reporter senses were on fire! I took up my camera at once and captured my scoop! I wrenched open the gap in the course read screens, sucked my lens in, and snapped the photo. Read screens? Indeed! If you'll take a look at this amazing photo I took, you'll understand! The walls of the shack were made of plant reeds roughly woven together. That's so that wind can enter the gaps and cool the interior. And my cool gaze entered as well, right alongside the wind. Setting aside the fact that peeping is a cowardly thing to do, had you already been watching since the time that Horisama, Haurisama entered the shack. Yes, I saw the whole thing from start to finish. And you say you took your photo from between the gaps in the reeds. Fortunately, the reeds were clustered in loose bundles. So I pushed those reeds aside and jammed my camera lens roughly inside. What a big hat, or what a hat! It was the biggest gamble of my life! Admirable persistence for a reporter! A scoop must be fought for! That's also part of my mommy movie philosophy! It seems the court has finally managed to find a true witness. Perfect evidence, a perfect testimony. We're finally approaching our verdict. <laughs> Don't say that! We need to cross-examine! Thank you, Your Honor. I'm glad to hear that. However, there was one thing in this testimony that raises a major question. A uh, question? You have all these things, a photo, a first-hand account. Why have they not been made into an article to read over morning tea? Good point. There must be a reason behind this. Ha! This is nothing but pointless quibbling! Now then, defense, your cross-examination. Yes, your honor. It sounds like that newspaper reporter is hiding some sort of ulterior motive here. Which we're gonna find out in the next video, because, yep, I, I guessed that time right. So we're gonna start pressing into this testimony in the next video. So I will see you guys then. After I return to 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 Is it the incidents that summon Mommy Mommy, or is it Mommy Mommy who attracts the incidents? Find out next time on the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle!